Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and today I'm going to continue with the houseplant show and tell and share with you guys my entire Aglianema collection. So Aglianemas are commonly referred to as Chinese evergreens, and they are in the Eraceae family of plants, so they're classified as aeroids. So they're very closely related to philodendrons, monsteras, raphidophoras, and many other plants that are very popular on the market right now. But Aglianemas, in my opinion, I think fly under the radar quite a bit, so I'm excited to showcase them today. So I have roughly 10 to share with you guys today, so a lot more palatable in my opinion compared to the Peperomia video if you guys watch that. So uh, this first one I'm going to talk about today is what I would consider to be the like mother of all Aglianemas. This is the most prevalent one that I would say is on the market. If you're going to walk into a houseplant store, a florist, even a grocery store, I would say nine times out of ten they're going to have this uh, particular Aglianema in stock, which is the Aglianema commutatum silver bay. So just this more standard green Aglianema as you see here. And this was actually the first Aglianema that I ever brought into my collection. Just bought this one at the hardware store. It was, I think, three or four plants at the time, but I was still learning how to care for these plants at first and I did lose I think two of the plants within the beginning of it and then one of them just kind of withered away over time but now I'm left with this very strong last standing plant here and this one doesn't seem like it's going anywhere anytime soon uh, but that's kind of the thing with Aglianemas I would consider them to be like the most reliable foliage house plant that I have in my home like I know when I get these acclimated to my home that I am able to put them in the darkest corners of my home and they're not only going to survive but thrive and put up leaves that that look absolutely gorgeous as you can see with this example here. However, that's the thing, you have to acclimate them to your home. As you can imagine, when these are grown in the greenhouse, they are subject to prime conditions, they are getting exactly what they need to grow lush and beautiful and be the beautiful full plant that you are purchasing at the houseplant store. And then you read the tag, it says low light houseplant on it, you bring it home, you put it in a dark corner of your home, and then suddenly a couple of those leaves within the first week or two start to turn yellow and they wither away and fall off and suddenly your Aglianema doesn't look as lush and full and beautiful as it once did. Uh, you can keep it looking that way. You just really need to give this plant what it needs in order to acclimate to your home. So uh, you do want to give these plants a medium to bright indirect light when you first bring them home. You don't need to give them direct sunlight. These leaves will definitely burn and they are certainly under pretty harsh shade cloths in the greenhouse to avoid any direct sunlight contact as these are definitely plants that are growing in like the understory of the rainforest in their natural habitat and they are not receiving any uh, harsh sunlight whatsoever. Uh, but they are not growing in no sunlight. Our homes are very dark in comparison to what these houseplants are receiving in greenhouses or in their natural habitat. So do keep that in mind. So uh, as this plant acclimates to your home and gets used to our drier, darker homes, uh, and it starts to put off some new growth, then you can experiment pushing it to the darker corners of your home. But this one right here is a great example to try that with because, like I said, it's very prevalent and it's likely to be the most inexpensive Aglianema, which these are rather slow growing houseplants. And I've noticed when I was a buyer that these were not inexpensive to buy wholesale. They were usually on the more expensive end. So uh, if you go to like a big box store, you're likely going to find these for the same price as everything else. But if you go to a more specialty like houseplant store or boutique store, then you're likely going to find that the Aglianemas do cost cost a little bit more than the other plants, so just something to bear in mind there. But as long as you acclimate them to your home uh, correctly, I think you're going to find a very rewarding houseplant to grow in your home. And they really are just so gorgeous. This one I have living on my nightstand, which is why I have it with the moss, just to make it look a little bit more uh, fancy. So I really enjoy this one. It's super easy to grow. I barely water this, probably just give it like the water that's left over in my glass like every like week or so when I remember and feel like I haven't watered it in a long time. So yeah, Aglianemas are extremely reliable, but um, you're not going to see as much variety with them as you saw with like the Peperomias, if you did watch my Peperomia video, where all of the plants look entirely different to each other and just have like small uh, similarities here and there. All Aglianemas are going to have a similar leaf shape and they're all going to have some sort of variegation for the most part that uh, sets them apart from the others, but they're all going to look rather similar. So just something to bear in mind there as we delve into this video. So another one that's got that similar kind of green pattern that you saw with the Aglianema commutatum silver bay is this Aglianema silver queen. 
uh, you're going to see a very similar variegation with this, uh, these leaves here. However, these leaves are much thinner, as you can see. They're a little bit more um, lancelet compared to the Aglaonema Silver Bay. So a little bit different that I like to see. And the stem also kind of sports this interesting, like whitish creamish color that kind of is a little bit splotchy. So I really appreciate that there. This is also another one that I got right when I was just getting my feet wet into gardening, definitely back around the time when I got my Silver Bay. And uh, this was once a very, very full house plant, but uh, trial and error left me with this one little bit right here, which I actually believe I propagated this. Like my house plant was just really nearing death's door and I was on a rescue mission. So I went ahead and propagated the little stem cutting. And this thing has really grown quite a bit. You can see the cane that it's formed over the years and I have it held up with this little cocktail stick because if not, it's just gonna flop over because the cane is a little too tall now. But it's just adorable. This is just a little cute little specimen plant that I have here, which you're going to see with my Aglaonemas for the most part, I'd say most of them are just one little piece of plant coming out with their fun little foliage, which I like because it has a lot of character, but you will also see how gorgeous and lush they look when they are a full house plant and why you might strive to keep them looking in that fashion. But I still think that these just with one little piece of plant coming out of one little pot here, I still think that they have so much character. And like I was saying, they're just the perfect low light house plant, so you can practically shove them anywhere. So I have this one growing inside my bookcase, but it's reaching a height now where I don't think I can really keep it in there much longer. There's no, not really any more room for any new leaves to grow in, so I best be finding this another spot. But you can see why I enjoy Aglaonema so much. They just have so much character, especially when they're just like one little piece here. But um, one that is a little bit more full, let's say, but doesn't really quite have the full effect that I'm referring to with the lushness because this is a little bit more of an interesting variety. And I want to talk about this one next because it has a very similar lancelet, grassy leaf shape in comparison to the um, Silver Queen, which you don't see that often with Aglaonemas on the market. But this is an Aglaonema by Kaw. Uh, this uh, is a very interesting grassy ugly name. Like I said, it looks very different and completely like an outlier in comparison to all the other ones I'm going to be talking about today. In fact, the leaves almost just like seem like they're just like melded together with their petiole and the way that it grows. It's just a, a really funky plant. Uh, definitely not the most showy one. This is more interesting, more of a conversation piece. I could imagine a lot of people maybe not wanting to bring this plant home, but I saw this when I was at, I believe, a big box store. I think me and my friends were just at like a Home Depot or Lowe's when we just moved into this building and just were there at the hardware store getting stuff. But of course, I can't go to the big box store without just peeking at the house plant selection. And I saw this and I was like, I have to bring it home. It's just so interesting. And it's an Aglaonema. So I know that once I have it acclimated to my home, I can put it practically anywhere. But you can imagine I'm a little picky with bringing plants into my home now because there's just so many of them. In fact, I would really like to still bring down my collection a little bit more. So I don't see myself bringing in any new house plants in the foreseeable future. Hold me accountable to that. <laughs> but uh, this was one that really did just have to come home with me. It's just really interesting. I don't really have much more else to say about it other than that. But yeah, it's just really cool. The like fun white petioles really stand out and then just the little bits of foliage that there are on this. It's just really cool. Don't have much else to say about it, but it's really cool. If you are a fan of Aglaonema, you would be a fan of the Baikal. However, if you're watching this video, it's likely that you are a fan of Aglaonema or perhaps you're just trying to get your toes wet which welcome, they're fantastic. So an example of one that has a little bit more color, this is definitely my least showy Aglaonema uh, in terms of how it looks. It has the most character, let's say. Uh, this is my, I believe Aglaonema, I'm gonna call it Ruby. There are so many different names for many of the Agli names on the market that I don't necessarily know exactly the name of some of the ones that I have. I just kind of ballpark what looks the most similar to it. So forgive me there. Uh, but this, you can see an example of the flower, which is very um, unremarkable. It looks kind of reminiscent of a peace lily. However, peace lilies are much more showy with their blooms. So yeah, not the most exciting thing. And you could also argue that this bloom is probably taking energy away from this house plant. So perhaps I don't want this flower on there, but I'm not so attached to this house plant. So I'm kind of just letting it do its thing. Out of all the ugly names, 
this is the one I'm just like least into. And I feel like the reason behind it is I'm just not as big of a fan of this leaf shape. It's like very wide and a little bit more stout. I'm just not really as into this in comparison to the more elongated leaves that you're gonna see in pretty much all of my other Aglianemas that I have. But I still enjoy this one uh, for the color that it brings to my home. And also I'm kind of working on a little experiment here, I guess, because um, Pardon the little bits of mealy bug on here. I do need to give it a little bit of a clean, but there's this fern, or not a fern, I'm sorry, a palm that just randomly shot out of this planter. And it's not like I just got this Aglianema recently. I've had this one for a long time. I put them in my wall garden, my vertical garden that I had in my old apartment back when I was doing that. Um, and then I took it down and then I planted it up in this planter here. And that was still at this point probably like a year and a half, two years ago. So it's been some time since I, it's probably even longer than that to be honest, but it's been some time uh, since I have potted this thing up in here and just out of nowhere, this palm just shoots out. I don't know if this is a parlor palm or an areca palm. I'm sure it's something that's very common on the market, but I have no idea how this happened. Like literally no idea. At first I thought it, looked, it was like a blade of grass coming out when the first like little leaf came out, but now it's looking pretty clear this is a palm, so I know this video is about Aglianemas, but like I said, I'm not too excited about this particular Aglianema, but I'm a little bit more excited about what's going on down with this palm here. Ooh, this one I'm really excited about. So this one just shot off two new leaves for me recently, so I'm really excited with the way that it's looking, because before it was just kind of hanging on with one leaf, but now it looks gorgeous. So this is my Aglianema, they called this Tricolor Echo. So I got this from Glass Houseworks, which I order from them like once a year, but I will say, as I have no affiliation with them as far as work goes, um, I don't trust their um, taxonomy. I feel like half the plants I buy from them are the incorrect name. So just something to bear in mind there. So I don't know if this is actually what this plant is. I'm just going to put that name on screen because that's how I purchased it as. But um, these leaves have this really interesting um, variegation. It's quite different um, than any of the other ones that I have in my home. I really like how just like randomly splotchy it is. And you can see it has that very similar leaf shape to the Aglinema commutatum silver bay, but um, obviously it's quite different as well. I think species wise, I think this is an Aglinema pictum, uh, which is kind of cool. I know people go pretty crazy over the Aglinema pictum tricolor echo. Is that? No, no. Tricolor? Yeah, I can even pick them tricolor. So um, maybe this is called tricolor echo because it echoes the tricolor. I don't know. I'm grasping at straws here. Anyway, this plant's really cool. I'm really excited that it's starting to grow now as it, I got it as just this one little vine here and then it spat out a couple new leaves, but then randomly over the last like year or so, I feel like the leaves just like were one by one just falling off. And then I had this one left. I feel like the second one yellowed a couple months ago and I was like, well, crap, don't want to lose this houseplant. But fortunately, just randomly, it spat out these two leaves. And as you can see, the one leaf here is just an extension of this plant here, but this other leaf down here is actually an offset or a shoot or a pup, or I don't know the word I'm looking for, but it's a baby plant that is produced out of the, the base of this plant. So that's very exciting and something that actually Aglianemas do, which you will probably see with some of my other Aglianemas that I move on to later in this video. But as your Aglianemas begin to mature and get more comfortable in their setting, they will start to kind of fill out themselves by putting off these baby plants. So that is really exciting. Um, I don't see myself usually going in and propagating those plants as I'm kind of a little bit set and forget with my Aglianemas unless it's a rescue mission as, as you've seen and will see in the future. Uh, so I see myself just letting this plant sit um, and fill up. But I guess in theory, you could absolutely separate off this baby and trade it or uh, give it to a friend or something along those lines. So yeah, a really, really cool house plant. I really, really enjoy this one. And I'm looking forward to these two plants starting to fill out and grow more because I see this plant being a really excellent specimen down the line. And speaking of rescue missions, I'll just talk about that one next. So um, this is in this little water here. This is an Aglianema, I believe a species Aglianema commutatum. So I got this as a full plant and I didn't have room for it, like a full six inch plant with like four or five plants in it. Um, so I ended up separating it into two 
and then I decided that wasn't a very good idea because that just turned it was too many plants I, that's fun to do when I was first getting into gardening like buying a house plant and separating it and dividing it into multiples and then having a bunch of them around the home but um, now that I have too many plants that's not ideal for me so I decided to plant them all back together I did this whole arrangement with like a chiflera and some pothos but this didn't love the watering regimen that I was giving um, it in comparison to the Schifflera and the Pothos. So I ended up just taking apart that whole uh, arrangement, deconstructing it. And then when I took out the Aglianemas, they didn't have any roots. So I was like, no wonder why you guys aren't growing. So I ended up just chopping the three of them that I had left and potting them, or not potting them up, just sticking them in some water to root up. Um, and this is one of the three here, and you can see it's just starting to root up now inside this little glass here. The water's kind of dirty, so forgive me. But it's putting off a new leaf, as you can see right here. It's not the most exciting aglinema. It's just these plain green leaves that have just these little tiny specks of green, like lighter green variegation. But I'm a fan of aglinema, so I saw this. It was unlike any aglinema that I had ever come across myself. So I had to give it a go. Zero regrets, and I'm sure once they all root up, I will have a nice beautiful Aglinema commutatum once again. But I just think it's cool because we're so used to seeing like Aglinema commutatum silver bay and all the other varieties of commutatum, but we're not really used to seeing species commutatum, so I like that. Speaking of um, more plain, uh, this is my Aglinema modestum. So this is an Aglinema that lacks any variegation, as you can see pretty clearly. It's just these plain green leaves. In fact, I would imagine that beginner gardeners would probably mistake this to be a spathophyllum or a peace lily because it just really has that very similar appearance. But that's, of course, what I love about this. I do have a soft spot for just like plain green plants. And this is a plain ass green plant right here. So what's not to love? Uh, this is one that I could imagine having a better effect when it fills out. I love this thing dearly. But in comparison to like my single specimens of aglianemas, like this obviously has a little bit more character than this thing right here. So I could imagine this Aglinema modestum performing better visually as a much more full house plant. Maybe we will get there down the line. Hopefully this one behaves just like the Aglinema tricolor echo and sooner or later puts out a nice offshoot for me. However, I've only had this one for like four months and as I was saying, Aglinemas are notoriously slow growing so I best be patient, but fortunately, I'm a very patient person. But I just love how plain green it is. I also got this one from Glass House Works just like the Tricolor Echo, so don't quote me on the name, but I'm pretty sure this is a Modestum. And I have this one planted up in the Repot Me all-purpose houseplant mix, which did you know you can use code Nick on repotme.com to get 10% off their soil mixes? And it gives me a small kickback too, so thank you so much. But yes, a really easy plant. I really enjoy this just plain green Aglianema. It's really cute, and I love how close it looks to a Spathophyllum too because I don't really have good luck growing peace lilies, but those plants do have a place in my heart. So moving on to my full er aglianemas, my last three of them I talk about are definitely more showy full plants, but you can kind of get the full gist of why I'm so obsessed with these house plants. So this is my aglianema chocolate. I feel like I just talked about it in my last video, so I'm not gonna go on about this one for too long. However, this is definitely one of the more popular uh, aglianemas that are on the market. Definitely one that's a little bit more difficult to get your hands on, I could imagine. Um, but I really love this because it looks so similar to uh, Calathea ornata. So it's just like how the Aglinema modestum looks just like a peace lily. This one looks just like a Calathea. And Calatheas are notoriously known for being diva houseplants. They are very, very finicky. And as I have been so adamantly saying, Aglinemas are the exact opposite. They are very, very reliable. So I really enjoy that this looks like such a diva houseplant, but it behaves the exact opposite. So if you have been personally struggling with growing Calathea ornata or Beauty Star, uh, give this Aglinema a grow. You won't regret it, but it really just has so many similarities in terms of appearance of Calathea ornata. It has that kind of purplish shade on the back sides of the leaves with that like uh, darker, like almost nearly black shade on the front, the pink stripes. But what I like even more about this is that, I mean, maybe it does on Calathea ornata? I don't recall, but the pink stripes show through very, very vividly through the back sides of the leaves, which is just really, really stunning in my opinion. This plant just really glows like in the light when I'm just like holding it up in front of my lights here. Really is such a stunning houseplant. I would argue that this is the most gorgeous Calathea that I have 
Did I just call this a Calathea? I would argue that this is the most gorgeous Agli Nemo that I have in my collection, and it rivals the Calatheas too, I will say. So, super gorgeous, super reliable, just have to say that it might be a little bit more difficult to get your hands on than some of the other ones that I'm talking about today. Uh, but I understand, because this thing is a freaking gorgeous, so it's worth the hunt. And another one that I am quite head over heels for, I mean, I am... I'm pretty obsessed with all of these. I'm pretty picky with my Aglinema collection too. I've been really keeping it slim, but uh, this is my Aglinema Spring Snow. And just like the Aglinema Ruby, uh, I'm not positive. This is truly a Spring Snow. There are so many different names for this. The Aglinema Wintry White House or Wine House or the, the Snow White or the Osaka White, the White Diamond. There's a lot of different names for plants that look exactly like this, but I've just been referring to this one as a spring snow because that's just what it reads to me as. That's what speaks to me. Uh, but the leaves are really stunning on this one. Obviously, this has some really vivid white variegation in comparison to all the other ones that I was talking about today, which I at first was not like as drawn to this Aglianema. I like never wanted to bring one home. Not that I was like not into it. It just didn't like speak to me. Uh, but I also put this one in my vertical garden that I had up on my wall before, so uh, I really was kind of just enjoying seeing like the undersides, the way that the leaves kind of, you know, look exactly the same and the white pattern really shows through versus all the other plants that were just like playing up there. But it wasn't until I took this one out of the vertical garden and put it in this emerald green Berg's planter, which if you follow me here on YouTube, you know I'm a big fan of Berg's planters, um, that this plant just really started to stand out for me. And not only that, it started to flourish. Like it was growing a little bit in the vertical garden, but once I had it planted up in here, this thing just started to explode in new growth and the leaves are just getting tremendous in size compared to what they used to be. This was like the size of leaf that I was used to when I first got it, but then it started to shoot off ones that were like this big and you know, it's just really carrying on and it's just so gorgeous. It really, really stands out in this green planter. I have this one sitting in kind of a little bit of a like green planter display that I have um, at this mirror that I have in my living room and it looks fantastic. And I just really, really love how much this stands out. And just like how the one looks like a spathophyllum and then the other looks like the Calathea ornata. I think this one kind of reads a lot more like a Diefenbachia, which granted, Aglianemas and Diefenbachias are quite closely related, uh, but Diefenbachias are just not my favorite houseplant. They're like incredibly toxic. And I mean, Aglianemas are still toxic to pets, but I think they're less toxic than Diefenbachias if I'm not mistaken. Still got to be mindful there. But Dyphenbachias are just like paper thin leaves that brown very quickly in our pest magnets. These are thicker leaves, more reliable, um, definitely more reliable in my opinion. So just have to point that out there. But this is one too that I've been really pushing to the darker corners of my home, uh, which I've been really enjoying. Keeping in mind that I've had this one for a while and I've really been just like pushing it deeper and deeper in darker spaces uh, over a couple years as these leaves, I could imagine with this being a white variegated Aglianema and not having as much chlorophyll as the ones that were all green, I could imagine this requiring uh, some more sunlight or just maybe taking some more time to acclimate, but the proof is in the pudding. You can absolutely grow this one in darker corners of your home. And I will say it shines bright in those dark corners of your home. That's to be said. Oh gosh, I know this is happening a little bit often, but Muffin wants to come and say hello real quick. A little Muffin intermission, even though we only have one more plant to talk about today. All right, dudesy, I really gotta finish this up. So go run ahead and take a nap. All right, so the last one I'm gonna talk about today is one that I have really been quite fond of over the years. This one has really matured for me. So this is my Aglianema Red Emerald. So this is a lot more showy, in my opinion, compared to the Aglianema Ruby, which I think, like I said, the leaves just don't blow me away on the Aglianema Ruby. However, this Red Emerald really just kind of blows me out of the water. There is just so much to love about this houseplant. And, oh, Muffin, be careful. Sorry, I don't want her to push the tripod too much if the camera moves. She wants to come say hello again, but my hands are too full at the moment. So these leaves are what I'm looking for in a Red Aglianema. These have a great shape. They have a great variegation and not only that but oh my gosh muffin you're getting too lovey with the tripod please move along sweet pea so these um, stems and petioles sport this gorgeous like pinkish reddish white color in comparison to the ruby which is just plain green so I'm not trying to downplay this ruby I'm just trying to explain why I kind of love this one ten times more uh, this one I got 
from a local house plant, uh, store here in Philadelphia, City Planter. And it was this full plant, as you can imagine, with all of these kind of in the base of the plant. But now that I've had this one for a couple of years, it's really started to just kind of push its way away from the planter. You can see the canes have gotten rather tall. They've grown at least like six inches and now they're starting to lean over. However, it's starting to do what the Aglaonema tricolor echo is doing and what I would like my Aglaonema modestum to do uh, is put out these little like baby offshoot plants right here. And these are starting to get quite mature. You can see the leaves on these are starting to look very similar to the mother plant here. So I guess in theory, these are about ready to go ahead and propagate if I wanted to. But like I was saying, I kind of just like my ugly name is to fill out and I don't need to add any more houseplants to my home. So I would prefer these to just stay put and enjoy their time living with their mother. So these birds will not be flying too far from the nest. But this is really just a very showy Aglaonema. Uh, I never really loved the colorful Aglaonemas until this one. I would say this is the one that really got me into it. And as you can kind of continue to see with the ruby not standing out to me and me just kind of having it for the palm experiment at this point, uh, this one is one that I couldn't consider getting rid of ever. This is in my top three Aglaonema. Oh, I don't want to play this game though. I don't want to play that game but this one will probably be in my top three. It just really means a lot to me. It's gorgeous. I have it sitting right next to my television and just these leaves spilling towards me as I'm sitting on the couch. So it really is just such a showy house plant. But just like the white Aglaonema, as I was saying, these ones that are a little bit less green, I would be mindful of pushing them into dark corners immediately. I think they probably do require a little bit more sunlight than say the Aglaonema Silver Bay. So just something to bear in mind there. But as I was also saying with my spring snow, that over time once they acclimate to your home, they seem to react just the same way. I am just kind of making up this in my mind that these need more uh, sunlight because they have less chlorophyll, which checks out. So I don't know, you can do the math. But anyway, I think that is all the ugly names in my collection today. Uh, they are plants that I really, really enjoy. I find them very, very reliable and my home would not be the same without my Aglaonemas. I really wish that I could have like a really large, full bush plant of Aglaonema somewhere in my home. Unfortunately, I don't have the room for it, but if I ever did have the room for it, that would be one of the first things I bring into my home. I feel like if I had to pick one Aglaonema that's on my wish list, which I've actually had it before, but I've killed it because trial and error. The Aglaonema Stripes, if you guys are familiar with that, that is like, that is like architectural perfection when it comes to a house plant. So one day, I might make an exception for bringing Aglaonema Stripes into my home once again. However, in the meantime, I will have to go ahead and find some space for it. But thank you guys so much for joining me. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.